Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. It's a great pleasure to introduce another of Cyril Churn's books. This one is Churn on Dispute Boards, now in a third edition, it's Practice and Procedure for Dispute Boards. And uh, Cyril Churn has come up with a really excellent book yet again. This is published by Informer Law for, from Routledge, which is part of the Taylor and Francis group. My wife Elizabeth and I have looked at this book, had a discussion about it, and for our review we've given it a title of our review, um, A Fourth Way to Resolve Construction Industry Disputes. The definitive work of reference now in a new edition, it's the third edition. Um, we'll talk about the book in, in a moment, let's just have a look at it. It's a heavy, heavy book, hardback, Nice front cover there and the spine. You can see it's uh, set out. It's a construction practice series. You can probably see that mentioned there. Now the book itself, let's start at the back. Um, very detailed index you can see there. This is a really consummate work. He's done a really wonderful job. Um, a lot of, there's the beginning of the index there, right at the back. Then you've got some resources which are mentioned there. And then, then we've got the main book itself. Let me just show you how it's structured. It's rather good. Some nice forms. He makes some comments, useful comments on forms. But let's go back into the book itself. We've got more agreements there. We get into the main book itself. There's some case studies, for instance, which are mentioned there. And the actual structure of the book itself. Um, you do have some footnoting. Not too much, but enough, which is quite helpful for particular um, purposes. You do have subheadings, you can see those there. You don't have paragraph numbering in the same sense that you get for other um, books. What, the way, one of the ways he's done it, he's using a step system to show how to deal with the hearing process itself, for instance, and various samples of various things that might be done, the documentation and so forth. Then what we do is we go to the front of the book and you can see here, there's the front of the book there, with um, Cyril Jones or Cyril's uh, excellent qualifications, a very qu highly qualified man. You can see details about this series of construction practice series of books. And here is the detail about the author. As I say, very knowledgeable person indeed. And I think he's highly authoritative on what he says. And there's nothing I would take issue with him on anything. I think it's just we're very, very lucky to have his, his services. There's the preface there, which is worth reading, which sets out what he's been trying to do over the, the many years he's been involved in this area. Then there's some acknowledgements. And then you've got the actual structure of the book, the chapter numbers there running through. Um, quite a large number. There are in fact 19 chapters in all, and there are some appendices at the back. There's a table of cases, not very many, and then some statutes and so on. They go straight into the dispute board concept. For those of you new to it and new to this area, I think you'll find it very easy to read. It says the concept of the dispute board and its benefits can best be shown by the following situation, the various methods of resolution. Now he does that all the way through because we're looking at mediation, arbitration, litigation, dispute board, what is a dispute board. So you see he, he runs through the whole thing very nicely. And as I say, he does use a lot of sub uh, a sub um, paragraphs, subheadings and so forth. And there are, a, there's a short amount of usage of uh, footnoting. Now this is what we say about the book. As part of the construction practice series published by Informer Law, this book now its third edition is well established as the definitive reference work for practitioners, particularly those at the construction bar. And I think it's, um, it's got a much wider uh, appeal just than that. But certainly it is the substantive work without any question. And of course up to the highest standards which Informer have always been known for with the work that they produce for these, uh, effectively, these library series of books that they publish. Even a cursory read of this eminently readable book should remind anyone, legal practitioner or not, but as author Cyril Chern points out, quote, the construction industry has a reputation 
for disputes and conflict. Now, having been involved in quite a few trials in this area, I couldn't agree more. And of course, one of the important things is you quite often don't know how the case is going to turn out. So advising a client can be a little bit difficult. This is not surprising when you consider the nature of, of course, of any building project, from bungalow to bridge, tunnel or transcontinental railway. Large or small, such projects are collaborative, involving up to thousands of personnel and carrying out a uh, contract often against uh, tight time constraints over lengthy time periods. And so you've got a lot to think about contracts, all sorts of other things. A real collision, of course, between both contract law and the law of tort, not to mention all the other problems you might have with the litigation. If anything goes wrong, which it, it almost inevitably will sometimes, the need for swift and effective dispute resolution arises, especially in situations where the usual three routes of, arbit of arbitration, mediation, and most commonly litigation prove impractical for any number of reasons. Hence our title, The Fourth Way, Enter the Emergence of the Disputes Board. Having evolved since the 1980s approximately, the Dispute Board is, quote, a creature of contract, says the author, a fourth way, if you like, as a flexible alternative to the traditional methods of dispute resolution. An interesting approach, if I may say so as well, bearing in mind where we're going with the whole of litigation at the moment, with the change of legal aid and all the other things that are happening across the board in terms of the civil jurisdiction process. And generally, there, you do, of course, need, when you have dispute resolution at this level, something which has teeth, in other words, with the authority and the decision-making powers to get the disputatious parties to come to an agreement. And that is, of course, where you do sometimes have the problem, because you say, oh, yes, of course I'll do mediation, I'll do this, and they have no intention of doing whatsoever. So you know quite quickly that you could have some problems. Hence the concept of these dispute boards, which I'm actually a bit of a bit of a fan of, I must say. The book offers a clear explanation of what a dispute board is, what it does and how it accomplishes its aims. It's intended for novices as well as seasoned practitioners and it provides actual examples of the forms, reports, recommendations and decisions that daily occur on dispute boards worldwide. Traditional mediators and arbitrators take note that one of the most important differences between a dispute board and the usual method of dispute res resolution is that the dispute board is appointed not after a dispute arises, but before. So in fact, the horse hasn't bolted and the stable door closed. So that in itself makes it a lot more attractive, I would have thought, to most people, except certain people who will be clients from time to time who have got rather different approaches and you have to then deal with it accordingly. But I do think that particular facility is very, very important and possibly something we may learn within the common law as a whole to look at as the 21st century develops as a possible way forward to avoid the litigation element entirely. But enough of that, that's for another day perhaps. Set up at the beginning of a project then, the dispute board rather than at the end, is anticipatory and proactive rather than reactive to events and circumstances that may have happened long before. Also of vital importance is that the appointees to the dispute board are generally well known in the industry, with acknowledged expertise and active involvement in the administration of the project and the authority to influence its progress. That of course will save time because you're not dealing with people who don't understand uh, what is happening. I'm not suggesting for one moment that when you litigate the judge doesn't understand what's happening but of course there is a slightly different way of approaching it if in fact it's very very technical which is what the construction bar actually deals with to a certain extent um, and obviously you do need to have people who, who are on the same wavelength and that's really what you've got here. Now the author, Cyril Churn, highly admired person, he's an expert in this evolving field Practicing barrister, and in addition to his formidable array of credentials, is also a chartered architect, chartered arbitrator, an accredited mediator and adjudicator. Over 40 years' experience in handling commercial and construction matters in over 20 countries worldwide. 
There's a quote here. The construction industry has a reputation for disputes and conflicts, he says, in which most construction projects end in litigation. Sad, but true, unfortunately. Therefore, if you're a lawyer practicing at the construction bar, this book is an essential purchase, and I'm sure most people will be aware of who Mr Churn is and what he's done to assist us over such a long period of time. Thank you. With its extensive table of cases, statutes plus seven appendices at the back, the book is certainly an information-rich resource of research and uh, experience. It proves conclusively Churn's view that the most construction projects that should start with a dispute board uh, is the right way forward. He also makes the point that the concept of the dispute board can be used or adapted across any number of other industries, including financial services. An interesting point, and one I think both Elizabeth and I would like to see developed. Certainly thinks it's a good starter for possibly the new Justice Secretary to think of. The publication date of this new and up-to-date third edition is cited at January 2015. Let's just have a quick last look at the book. It's a heavy one. As I say, it's lovely green cover. There's the front side. Remember, it's the Construction Practice series. Nothing on the back. It runs to um, 700 odd pages. Um, I do like... These are the appendices. Let's take one here. Sample of oaths and affirmations. Very helpful. Um, various ways of dealing with it. Appendix 7, the Dispute Board Federation Dispute and Adjudication Board, ad hoc rules. Again, uh, gives you some idea of how they may, may go about things. Some information on um, interpreters if you need them for uh, affirmation purposes. Then the various rules, determinations of the board and so forth. This has been well thought out. Then their agreement for the Dispute Adjudication Board members. So that, again, it's all quite open and clear as to where we go. Um, there's the FIDIC Gold Book, Conditions for Contracts for Design and so forth, which is Appendix 4. I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. <clears throat> a lot of information on additional forms all the way through. It's a very detailed book. Um, and just looking at it, just opening it anyway, you can see, I think one of the areas which a lot of people find very helpful is the hearing process itself and how it might differ from some of the things that we would be used to in a main court. And the selection of the dispute board is also, I think, an important area. Let's just go to the front again. You can see the structure of the book here. The concept itself is set out right at the beginning. And I certainly found that very interesting from an international perspective as much as anything else. And then the legal basis, appointment and so forth and all the other things. Thank you very much, Cyril Churn. It's a very good book. Thank you also to Informer for taking it under their wing to produce it. This is a great benefit to us at the Construction Bar and I'd like to thank everybody very much for their involvement and the production of what is an essential tool for us at that type of bar. Thank you. Bye-bye.